Now that we have a calendar that has the correct placement of the dates, regardless of what month or year we've chosen, what I want to be able to do now is respond to uh, a click on that calendar. Imagine maybe we want to do something like create a new event on a certain day. And so we click on that day and it takes us to a page that allows us to you know, make a new event, schedule a new event for that day. Uh, so in order to do that, we need to be able to respond to clicks on the calendar. And that's what the purpose of this video is going to be, is to show us how to do that. In order to do that, we're going to create a new event listener, um, this time not on the drop boxes, but on the calendar grid itself, actually on the screen. <clears throat> and so we're going to create an event listener the way we always do, using the on event uh, method. And we're going to use screen one here. That's the name of my screen. And what we want to respond to is a click to the screen. And we're going to write a function in line here. So uh, as opposed to uh, using a function that we've already written, like draw a calendar, which we used in these other event listeners, we'll write one right here within the on event call. And that's called an inline function. So we're going to define that function, that a function is going to uh, have associated with it the click event that's going to be passed in as a parameter into this, uh, into this function. So what does this function do? Well, I need to be able to tell what date was clicked on based on the position of the mouse or pointer when it was clicked, right? So first thing I want to do is show you how to get that information. So we'll console.log the X and Y positions of the mouse. The way we get that is using the event parameter, okay? When I type event here, what I'm referring to is this event, event.x comma event dot y. These are parameters, or these are, I should say, attributes of the event um, that's being passed in that tell us the x and y coordinates of the mouse at the moment of the click. So just to show you, we'll run that. And now when I click in the console, it shows me these screen coordinates. Okay, and these are screen coordinates relative to, uh, you know, not the monitor screen that you see over here, but the screen of the little app, right, which is why you can get some a fractional um, points there. But if I come up here, you know, it should be close to zero, zero. Okay, so yeah, two comma three. Uh, and we can kind of see how big the screen is. If I come down here, oh, I missed, you know, looks like it's like 320 by 450 maybe uh, would be the whole width of the screen. And if I click on the calendar, I get you know a variety of different values here depending on where I click. What I want to do is translate these x and y values into row and columns of the calendar, and then use the rows and columns to backwardly sort of figure out which date I'm on, kind of undoing what we did when we actually placed these numbers. Okay, so but the whole starting point is these x and y values from the mouse. Okay, since I want to kind of reverse engineer uh, what date I'm on based on where I click, I do need to figure out again, once again, where these numbers are based on the date that we see here. So essentially, I'm going to kind of redo what I did up here, um, create that date for the first of whatever month I'm on. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it down here. So I'm going to need that information. Next, I'm going to want to figure out, again, like what's the starting column, right? So that offset uh, that I called up here for the column, right, that I used d.getDay for. So uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to call that um, day offset. Okay, so I'm going to make a variable var day offset. I'm going to set that equal to d.getDay. Remember, get day returns the day of the week as a number. So starting with Sunday as 0, Monday as 1, Tuesday as 2, etc. This is going to tell me for date D, which is the first of this month, which day of the week that was. Okay, so in, in my case, that's going to be 2. 0, 1, 2. A Tuesday. Okay? And all I'm trying to do is get that information right now so that I can, again, re reverse engineer where these, these numbers are so I can figure out what date it is, where they click. All right, so I need to now figure out where is, you know, what row and what column is my mouse in when I click, 
where are these x and y values? You know, like if I look at this one, 236.8 and 175 essentially, where is that on the screen? Is that over here? Is that over here? Which row and column am I, am I in? So I'm going to create variables for the row and column. We'll start with the column. And I need a way to figure out uh, which column that is. Now, I want to th in order to do that, we're going to think about how those columns were created. Okay? First of all, those columns are on the Canvas widget. And the Canvas widget is placed on the screen. Okay? So you know, if we go back to the design here, we can kind of look at the Canvas widget and, and see oh, the position of the Canvas widget on the screen in the X direction is 10. So that means there are like 10 pixels between the edge of the screen and the start of the Canvas. Okay? So those 10 pixels really have nothing to do with where I'm clicking on the canvas because the canvas is, you know, is moved in by 10, essentially, from the edge of the screen. Likewise, the Y position of the canvas is 110, right? Up here, if I click up here, I'm not even on the canvas. So I need to uh, sort of discount those, this amount of space in the X direction and Y direction as I'm figuring out the rows and the columns, okay? So, the way that I figure out that spacing is, it, is to realize that that's a property of the canvas, okay? And we actually kind of used that when we were creating the date labels, and I, uh, I had used these offsets, if you remember from a previous video, and to, to get those offsets, these offsets are offsets off of the edge of the screen for drawing the labels. So I had the X offset to be the X property of the canvas, which is the 10, right, uh, plus 5 to move that label in a little bit, okay? Uh, I had the Y offset of the canvas to be the Y property of the canvas, plus 5 to move that down a little bit. So I'm basically going to recreate that. Let's, let's just recreate this. The 5, I don't know that I really care about the 5. That was just to move the labels inside the grid a little bit. But I want to know... the offsets in the X and Y directions. So I'm just going to copy this. Now you might not need these variables. I'm creating these variables so that I can kind of, when I read the code, I understand what these things are. Okay. Um, now as I figure out the column, what I need to do is take the, let's look at the X coordinates first here, the column coordinates. I'm going to take the mouse click and figure out which column I'm in by taking into account this offset, right? So for instance, if I'm in, let's run it. Well, uh, I have a syntax error because I stopped in the middle of what I was doing here. Um, if I run this <clears throat> and I click in between here before the, um, the canvas actually starts, like let's say I click when X is five on the screen. I'm, that's not any column. That's before the column, right? But if I click in like X is 15, then I'm in column number zero. That's what I want to produce, right? Anywhere from basically where this starts, which is 10, up to here. Now, how far is this? From 10 to where? Well, we have to think about how we produced these lines. And that was a few videos ago when we were drawing the grid. I had made those grids 43 by 43 in the X and Y direction. So this essentially goes from 10 to like 53, okay? 43 wide. So what I need to do is knock off those 10 cord those 10 pixels on the outside of the the grid. So I'm going to subtract that off. event.x minus the X offset. And then in order to figure out which column I'm in, I'm going to divide by the width of the column. In this case, 43. Why am I doing that? Well, let's just sort of think about that a little bit. Let's say I click right on like 52, okay? Well, I want 52 to be in column, column number 0. So 52 minus 10 is 42. 42 divided by 43 is, you know, almost 1, right? almost one, but it's a little bit less than one. And so what I want to do is take that and like truncate that. I want to um, use a floor function actually, right? 
in order to figure out what's the, the greatest integer less than uh, the calculation I've made. So 42 over 43 is nearly 1, but I want that to be column 0, so I'm going to truncate that uh, after the, the integer part, which is 0, so 0 0.9 whatever it is, right? So the way that I do that, the way that I do that truncation is to say there's a uh, class in JavaScript called math, and there's in math there's a floor function. And we pass in the calculation that we want to um, take the integer part of. Now you might look at this and say, oh, there's, there's a math part of the toolbox, right? And you can see there's some functions in there. And these are all part of those that math class as well. There are other classes that code.org just doesn't make available to you. They're still there. They just don't uh, show it to you because the toolbox would get be too big. So they just kind of show you the popular ones that they think you're likely to use. But math can do a lot more than what you see there. There's trig functions. There's all kinds of stuff. We're going to do something similar with the row here, but we're going to use the y coordinate, right? I want to subtract from the mouse click location the y offset, which was 110. I want to divide that by 43 as well because the heights of each of the, the rows is also 43. And I want to take the integer portion of that, or the floor, and do that. Now let's double check. We're going to console.log that to see if we're getting the right row and column. So we'll console row and column, see if that's right. Let's get rid of this console log so we don't get too many entries there in the console. Reset, run that. All right, so if I click up here, it should be 0, 0. And look at that, 0, 0. Uh, Row 0, column 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This should be 0, 6. You can see 0, 6. Okay, excellent. Uh, row, I don't know, let's just pick one. This is 15. This should be in row 0, 1, 2, column 0, 1, 2. So this should be 2, 2. Perfect. So we can see that this calculation is producing for us the correct row and column for the mouse click. Now all I have to do is figure out which date that is, okay? And so in order to do that, we're, we're going to use our day offset and kind of reverse calculate that as well. So what is the date uh, for, for a given row and column? Well, we need to realize that every row has seven values, and every um, time we move down a row, we're basically adding seven, right? So let's create a, a date variable and say that <clears throat> whatever row we click on, we're going to multiply that by 7, right? If we click in row 1, then that means there were 7 spaces before I got to row 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so this would start on, a, um, on an 8 if I were to actually start on the first column in the first row. This would be 8, okay? So row times 7 plus the column number plus one for the fact that we're starting on a one and not a zero, whereas the rows and columns themselves start on zero. But then we have to subtract the day offset, how many days we started into the, into the week. And this is going to be our actual date number. So let's console.log that and see if that's working. You might want to stop and sort of mentally analyze that calculation that I just performed. Um, make sure that that makes sense to you or ask me if it doesn't. Uh, let's see if this works. So now I should be able to click on a day. Let's pick day seven here. This is going to be row one, call, excuse me, yeah, row one, let's, day, let's pick eight. Row one, column two, so I should see a one, two, and then I should see eight for clicking in eight. One, two, eight, there it is, okay? Uh, here I should get, let's say I would do the 30, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, column 4, or excuse me, row 4, column 0, 1, 2, 3. So I should see 4, 3, and then 30. 4, 3, 30. So this looks pretty good. Everywhere I click, I'm getting the right number. Let's double check that that doesn't only work in January of 2019. Let's try May of 2021. Okay, I should be able to click this and get a 26 out of it. Indeed, I am. Good, 26, 24, 
14. You may have noticed as I click the drop downs, the uh, event listener is still listening, right? So if I click this drop down, I get some interesting in numbers here, right? 4, negative 15, okay? And as I try to, uh, or excuse me, negative 2, 4, and as I try to do this, I get negative 15. I'm still calculating some dates. They're just bogus dates um, because I'm clicking outside of that that grid, that calendar grid. And so that's something we want to be careful about as we try to figure out what day it is that we sort of ignore any clicks that are happening outside the calendar. But this is pretty good. Anytime I click in the calendar, I get the right date. And so we're going to use that information then to uh, create an event record in a future video here. Okay, so we'll make an event for a given day once they click it, take it to another screen, and save all that information to the database.